Hey guys, what's up? Gray here and welcome back to Mono Game. So in the last episode, I set up the whole project and I didn't really do anything to it, but I just showed you everything that is in the project just straight out of the package. So if you hit play, you can actually see the, uh, the window that brings up. So there you are. We have this little uh, window. It's not very big and I don't think you can resize it or anything special, but it'll say your game title right there. Just exit out of that. Um, but today we'll be adding a sprite into Mono Game as well as giving it keyboard movement. So let's get right into this. We're just going to add two new variables. We're going to do private because it's only going to want to be seen in this class. So do private and we're going to need a texture, a 2D texture. There's two things we need. We need the texture, which is the actual picture of the sprite. And then we also need the position. So here we go. We need texture. This is just a good way to do the basic texture right now because we're not doing anything fancy. There we go. And then we also need a private position, which is going to be a vector two. So 2D means two dimensional. There's an X and a Y. Same with the vector two. There's an X and the Y because on the 2D on the on the window right here. Oh, it's not going to let me. Uh, let's finish this underscore position. There we go. Save that. So when we open this up, there's an X and the Y. So when you're calculating position, if you change the first one, it's going to be X. It's going to go left and right. And then down is going to be the Y. All right. So now that we have those two variables, we can actually open up the mono game pipeline tool. And if you already have mono game installed, you can search for it on your computer. It's installed somewhere. And when I first opened it, I couldn't find it, but I just went to where my mono game project folder is and opened the content and replaced it. So it made a new content, you know, I'm going to right click, add existing item. And on my desktop, I have the car up. So you're also going to want to do the copy the file so that it copies a new version of it in your directory. And that's all you have to do, hit add. And then when you build, you're always going to want to rebuild it because then it'll uh, do it successfully most of the time and save it just in case if it doesn't save. So that's all we need to do there. So now we can actually go into the load content and delete the comment. And in here, we're going to want to pull up the texture, which will equal content.load. So it's basically loading it from the content pipeline and do these kind of brackets because we're going to make it a texture 2D and then uh, curly brackets as well as the quotation marks car underscore up. So then after that, do semicolon and that's basically it. You're always going to want to use uh, PNG, but you don't state it. So you can't actually have two car ups um, because it would only see one of them. And so that would probably give it an error or some sorts. Um, but you don't have to say like dot PNG or anything because it just automatically pulls up this one. So once we do that, then we can actually do position equals new vector two. And in here, we're going to want zero, zero. So this is where you can do, like I said, the X or the Y and um, I'll give an example after we do the draw method because that's the next step. We're going to actually have to do the draw. So here you have to do sprite batch dot start or sorry, begin and oh, why did it do a capital? And sprite batch dot end. There we go. So that's going to start the draw and end the draw, but then you also have to do the actual drawing. So sprite batch dot draw, and we're going to give it a texture, a position, as well as the overlay color, um, which will just do default white. If you do red, it'll give it like a reddish hue, same with like blue or purple or any other color. White will just be the basic. Um, no hue. Okay, interesting. It didn't work because I had, I had using system metrics. You don't want that because it's gonna 
mess up what vectors are. It doesn't, it, it can't figure out what it's even looking at. So we had it right, but now we can move on. So then it loads that, and then we have this. Okay, and then here we need the underscore sprite batch. Right. Yeah, okay, perfect. So we needed the underscore because right here in the variables, it's underscore sprite batch. So we're going to need to begin it and end it, and then it's going to draw in the middle. Perfect. So actually, if we hit play, it should, yep, draw our little car there. Um, and then now we will add the actual update. So when the game is thinking, it's going to update and then draw and then update and then draw and then update and then draw. So we're actually going to just get rid of the gamepad because we're not going to use that just right now. And in here, we are going to say an if loop, the keyboard state right there. Oh, state. Uh, keyboard dot get state and is down is key down that's what we want and then inside there we're gonna have all of the keys the so keys dot and then it'll show us all of the stuff that we can have uh, we're just gonna basically do W because WASD to move and then down here we're gonna open brackets and gonna say if the position Y, because we're moving it uh, up and down, and do that. It's going to move it up when we hit W. So when Y gets smaller, it moves it up one. And then we can just copy this. Perfect. So we want W, S for down, and that's basically going to be a plus is the Y would be getting bigger at that point. And then here we want A, and this is gonna be the X axis. And this is gonna be X axis as well, but we are gonna just change this to plus because it's getting bigger, so it'll turn, go to the right, and it'll be D. So now we can hit save, hit play, and now if we use the air, or use WASD, it's gonna move it. Now obviously we have an added any animations or change the car side but that'll be in a later episode where if you hit the d key then the car would change to the right orientation or if you hit the a key it'll change to the left orientation same with down um, but for now this is just a working moving car and uh we can also change the background so it's not blue on blue we can do like um right here cornflower blue you can turn it to slate like gray perfect it's with an a just like me okay save and then that's basically how you just change the background color now it's going to be a nasty gray but you get the point and it says this could be the race track and you're moving around and obviously we'd have the car go faster um to do that we would just do if we wanted the a key to do like five then it's going to be ten so right is going to be faster than if you go to left. Left, it's only 5 pixels. Right is 10 pixels. And that's how, like, if you were to go over boost, you'd use a loop. If you're going over boost, if you have that boost, then you'd be able to go faster. Um, but we'll, that's a lot more advanced, so we'll get to that later. I just want to show you what I'm kind of thinking. Um, and we're also going to have to make it so that you can't go off the screen. But uh, we'll get to that into the next episode. At least now you know how to put a sprite into Mono Game and how to get it moving around. So this could be a character. This could be an airplane. It could be whatever you are envisioning for your game. Um, but if you did enjoy, please drop a like. I will have more content on Mono Game very soon. I plan on making some sort of racing fighting game uh, and eventually add multiplayer. But we're just going to see how... It goes and if you did enjoy please drop a like tell me what you want to see next i have some stuff planned but if you have something specific you want me to explain then i'll totally do the research and i'll help you guys out but thank you all for watching and have a nice day